Um, Juwan, you talk about teaching moments. Uh, what was your message to these guys after the game, uh, after the disappointment? Yeah, every game you win, you, you win or you lose, uh, you always find teachable moments. Um, and that game right there that we played against uh, Arizona, uh, it was a teachable moment for us. And looking at, you know, a recap of the first half compared to the second half, both halves, we didn't play well. Um, we started out a good, good start. I, I shared with them about how in the beginning of the game, uh, we had a good flow. Uh, we played hard. Um, we got into our offensive sets. Defensively, we were solid. But then there was a switch where when the game was 21 to 23, um, I think that's where the disconnect uh, was lost. And uh, when teams make runs like that, we got to yeah. be able to reel ourselves back in. And that's where um, we, we did not do a good job of that. When we got frustrated, uh, there were times when we felt like uh, we didn't want to be coached. And not all, all guys, but only a few. We also allowed their defense to speed us up. So offensively, when we ran some of our offensive sets, uh, there were two or three guys didn't know what spots they were in because they didn't know to play. And that's where the disconnect started. And then from there, uh, we could never gain it back. We'll follow up with uh, Andrew Kahn. Hey, Juwan, first of all, how are you feeling? Is that just Vegas and lack of sleep and travel or are you, are you doing all right? You don't, you know, you got a hoarse voice. I can hear that. Yes, I do have a hoarse voice and uh, I, I'm, I'm feeling better um and it's not just because of vegas and nor was i partying it <laughs> well I didn't, I didn't mean to suggest that sorry oh but that you sort of sound like you was kind of getting at that no 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 i just meant this one of, back to back late game clear that uh you know that's a coach's voice so i sound like right. my good friend uh tom thibodeau <laughs> <laughs> all right fair enough okay so as far as the the game um or the games you know uh, guys not knowing plays uh, that could be one thing but when you talk about guys you know not accepting coaching and you know accountability and things like that I, I imagine that could be maybe more concerning like yeah I guess what what is your concern level for that or, or why that may have happened with the team it that it, it hasn't been an issue for no I, I don't have a concern about it um it's just a part of learning and and that you know when you hit a little adversity in games you know guys try extremely hard to do everything right and um, make sure that they play mistake-free basketball. But when mistakes happen, you got to be ready to uh, uh, accept some of the coaching, especially when frustration settles in. And, and that's a part of growing. Um, and and I, I trust every kid on our team has high character. Every team in our team cares about um, each other, cares about the team, uh, cares about you know their coaches and, and, and loves you know, being around one another. You know, that's a part of growth. You know, you're going to have those moments because they they don't want to see, uh, uh, you know, teams make runs on it. They don't want to see when they make mistakes and they hate to make the mistake. They want to uh, give their best effort. Um, and that's a part of the process. And so um, I I don't feel it would be a problem, and then, nor it will ever be a problem. Thanks. <clears throat> Next up is Michael Cohen from the Free Press. Hey, Juwan, uh, you mentioned earlier the importance of maintaining composure when teams go on a run so that you can reel them back in without letting the game get away uh, get away from you. What are some of the things that, that a team can do or a coach can do to try and get better in that area of maintaining composure in adverse situations? You know, everything is about, all about breath. You know, I'm really big on meditation. And, and meditation is uh, some of the best therapy when it comes to um, – when, when things are not going your way or when you want to try to reset your brain in order to uh, get to a, a really calm place. And so breathing is important. The guys will tell you in huddles, and I'm all about, hey, let's take a nice deep, deep breath and let's, let's, get, let's get back to it and reset the button and get our minds back in it and so we can uh, go out there and uh, play at a, at a level where we're capable of playing. I will go back to Chris Ballas. Which, what's the one biggest thing you want to see tomorrow night coming off the disappointing loss in, in terms of making progress? Well, I, 
not just one biggest thing, but you know, there are several things I would like to see. And uh, hey, let's get back to the Michigan way. Uh, stay connected, um, uh, play hard from start to finish. I thought, you know, last game, uh, Arizona, give them credit. Uh, they had more energy and effort uh, in areas of, of the ball game uh, that, that they showed that we did not display that we have done in the past. So I would like to see that tomorrow, which I, I'm sure I, I know I will. Um, and, and then it's good to be back home um, after a, a four to five days together on the road, uh, a team of, I'm sorry, a, a trip of bonding, which we did. Um, that would now help us throughout the season. Um, and being, you know, going through the adversity that we went through and learning how to grow with it, I think well, we, we're going to have, you know, some special things, you know, come not just on Wednesday, but for, for the rest of the games to come. Because we play against some really high level teams. Uh, looking back to Buffalo and Seton Hall and UNLV and Arizona, uh, you know, and not, not taking anything away from Prairie View. I mean, A&M, they played extremely hard and they played, they won their, their conference last year. Uh, yeah, it's good that we're playing these teams early because that's going to prepare us uh, for this upcoming season uh, that, that, or what's left of the season. We'll go back to Andrew Kahn. Juan, with, with Devontae, I mean, part of what made him good at, at Coastal was his aggressiveness on both ends of the floor. But, you know, so far through five games, he's had some offensive fouls and just foul trouble in general. You know, I, I guess where are you balancing that aggressiveness with, you know, we, we want to keep you on the floor and out of foul trouble? Yeah, that's something that he also has to learn, not just the coaches, but that's, you know, you, Devontae, a smart player. I uh, still want him to be aggressive, but got to be smart, aggressive. Uh, without getting himself in foul trouble, like you mentioned. And, um, and, and as a player, you know, being a former player, uh, you got to figure that out. Sometimes the coaches are, are not going to be the ones to help you uh, figure it out. You got to have a feel for the game and understanding um, uh, how the, the game is being called, uh, the flow of the game, and the situations when you can be overly aggressive and not. I mean, he, he, he'll learn that. Thanks. And then with, with Caleb, you know, his, he's in a little shooting slump right now, but he, he's got a track record of hitting shots at AAU, high school, FIBA. I mean, do you just kind of, I guess, leave him alone and know it'll come around or are you in his ear about things? Like, yeah, how does that work? Shoot or shoot. Keep shooting it. <laughs> That's how you get out of a shooting slump. Keep shooting right. it. Keep letting it fly. All right. Thanks. We'll go back, we'll go back to Michael Cohen. Hey, Juwan, is there a little bit of a balancing act when it comes to Eli in terms of wanting to have the ball in his hands because of the things he can do as a playmaker and in the screen and roll, but also knowing that if the ball is in his hand, then he's not a spot up shooter and, and he is one of the better shooters that, that you guys might have? Uh, Eli is going to be a player for us like he has been. Uh, last year, he, was, he had the ball in his hands to make decisions. This year, the same thing. Um, we need him to do both, and he's done a great job of it. Thank you. We'll go to uh, James Hawkins from the Detroit News. Hey, Juwan, going back to Devontae, there's, there's been a couple of games where he's had, to, he's had to sit some for long stretches after picking up some really fouls. I guess when he's not on the floor at the point, I guess how does that change what you guys are able to do offensively with this group? Um, fortunate enough, we have um, two players, Eli and Frankie, uh, that, that will have the ball in their hands and now become our decision maker. Uh, on the floor. So Frankie is uh, he's growing in that area as a freshman and he will continue to grow and get better. Um, but, you know, you, you any coach and team would love to have, you know, their guy who's a starter, primary ball handler, be out there on the floor, uh, not having foul trouble. But in the course of a game, it's going to happen. We'll just try to continue to keep making adjustments. Right. And you mentioned with him, there's times where he's maybe overly aggressive. I guess looking at the film, how correctable do you feel like are some of the fouls that he's been committing? Well, uh, some of the fouls he's committed where he's tripped over himself and, and knocked the player over uh, as he driven the ball up the floor. Uh, some of the fouls that he's created where he probably uh, back tapped to try to back tap the ball and uh, whether he fall or hit someone's arm. And uh, those, 
still, it happens in games and um, he'll get better with it. Does anybody have anything else for coach this morning? All right, coach, you can uh, refill your tea and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Juan. Coach. All right. Bye-bye, guys.